Hello everyone and welcome! This time I'm going to teach you how to paint using only two colors. They're not even technically colors. One is black and one is white and so we will mix them together and we will go from this photograph of a magnolia to this drawing to this completed painting. And we're going to practice a little bit with our gradation. Gradation just means going from the darkest color to the light color gradually, gradation gradually. And I am really excited about this and I hope that you are too. It will take a long time, so break it up into different steps um, so that you can enjoy it more. And then I'll see you at one of our meetups. Let's get started. First, we need to do a line drawing of our magnolia. So you want to get your paper ready. You have an 8 by 10 piece of paper and you want to tape it to something else. And then remember from last month that we measured all the way to the corners so that it's 10 inches across, 8 inches up. And this time we're going to chop it in half this way, that way, and then chop the parts in half so that your paper will be divided in halves and then a fourth and three fourths. And here on the side, you can see that on the eight inch side, that'll be at the two inch mark, the four inch mark, and the six inch mark. And on the 10 inch side, it'll be at two and a half inches, five inches, and seven and a half inches. And then use a pencil and a straight edge to create the grid across. So I have this drawing already, and we're gonna use this to learn how to draw it because it should match up in the spaces. All right, so in the first square, we mostly have a line and we know it starts here. And I'm not gonna continue drawing this line because I'm gonna wait till we're all the way to this square and kind of draw the whole thing. And then in this corner, we have this part of this petal. Now I'm ready for the next square and I'm going to start here and head that direction and this direction. Then we have this petal that is behind. And this petal that cuts the corner and starts to appear there. And then this is a bit of a fold. And we can do this line because it doesn't keep going. Now for this side, it's like this comes to about here. And that line is for that fold. This line, oh, it's going to go underneath of that before it does anything interesting. And then we have two lines come at this angle. That's below, oh, and then we have the point of this leaf in that square. And we're already to the last square where this goes up, down, exits the page. The diagonal that comes all the way to here. This kind of looks like a mandolin or some upside down lips or something. And over, straight, diagonal. And there's a little bit peeking up from a bottom petal. All right, we have the first line finished. Now for the second row. Again, not going to draw this line just yet, but I am going to put this in. And the rest of this one. There is this little bit at the bottom. which takes us into our next square here. The lovely thing about magnolia blossoms, the leaves and the flower petals are very thick 
and so it makes them a lot of fun to draw because they twist and they have different form to them, all the different sides. So super fun to shade and great for this exercise. This one comes off the side, kind of goes up, looks like the beluga. It's got like a nice beluga head kind of shape. So that's happening down low. All right, this one. I'll we'll bring this one down. A little bit more, there's part of a bud peeking up here. Get the bud, a little bud, and part of a leaf. Okay, I think that's everything. Now we're ready for row number three. And so finally, we know where this line is going that we started up there. So we're just gonna put a mark here that that's where it's headed. We'll take care of that in a bit. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna finish our, our drawing first. So I'm gonna come down over. 3D line, finish this, And there's a leaf in this row coming up in front. More to this bud. And a leaf behind. That's down there. Okay. More to this leaf. And a leaf under here for the beginning. Uh, another leaf here. That's fine. I'm going to wait to draw that one when we're down on the, the row four because that will have better information to help us on that. Um, little part there. So it goes to that line down. Oh, and then there's little textures in here. On the flower, that's the yellow part in the middle. But we won't be seeing that in this picture. Okay, let's move down to the last row. Row number four. So we're at the bottom now. And we can finish up this leaf. And there's another leaf that kind of overlaps here. This one is a fun leaf. That's why I saved it, because it looks really tough but I think it's going to be really fun so we want to include that get this big leaf so we know where we're going there's a stalk over here there's 
leaves all attached to the stalk on this side. And then there's the bud. Okay, we need this to come to here. And then that can go behind that. And we have this leaf. The other side of that leaf. There's part of a leaf coming from behind. Now this one comes over to here. And this one comes up. So a lot going on on this bottom row. All those leaves are close together. Okay, now let's see what you do. All right. One, two, three, four, five. So this comes through the X ray vision. It's the leaf behind. There's another leaf behind here. And it looks like it has a stem coming up here, and this stem going to this leaf, and there, and a line there. Okay, we did it. We have everything drawn except for that one line that I told you about, but we have it marked where we're going. Oh, well, let's finish this leaf up here. Poor little leaf. Almost got left out. Okay, there we are. Okay. So the last thing is I know I have a line that's coming from here and it goes all the way to there. So that's the end of it. Now that the entire drawing is finished and because we are doing a black and white painting, I'm not going to worry about erasing any lines right now. I know that the grid kind of is annoying and distracting and in the way. Um, but it makes sense for me at this point in this process to just take the black paint and I, I just have a little bit in the lid that it came in and a brush, a nice round brush that comes to a point. It doesn't really matter how big they are as long as they come to a point. And so we're going to put the tip of my brush in the lid of my paint because I'm going to outline my painting. I'm not going to outline the grid, but I'm going to outline everything else. And because I'm right-handed, I'm going to start at the top and the left and work my way this direction so I can rest my hand on the painting. So you can see that it won't be a super tiny line, and that's okay. We'll be glad about that later. We just want to trace everything. As you can see while I'm tracing, that my lines are pretty broad. I'm not trying to have a tiny, skinny, thin little line. Um, the reason for that is it's, it's like having a ledge to stand on. You want to have enough of an edge to it that when we go to mixing the different grays, that we have plenty of space to play within each shape that is offered to us by the flower or the leaf. So definitely um, try not to have too tiny of a line. And pay attention when you're using your brush. Um, notice that I'm refilling my brush with paint pretty frequently. Soon as I finish at one stroke, I just go ahead and re-dip in the paint, even if I think I've got more paint there. Just makes sense to reload. And then in general, it works best if you paint in the direction that your brush handle is going. Because if you take it from the side, so I'll try to do the side one, you'll get more of these little kind of hairy bits on the edge. Uh, but that's going to be okay for this one because this one is going to have a lot more going on. Notice it's not a drawing. So that's also what's different. This is a painterly approach to have these outlines like this. If you had a pencil, you would have more precise lines, of course, uh, but we don't really need that or want it at this point.
If you're up on the toe of the brush, you'll get a thinner line. Um, and if you smash the brush, you'll get a much, much thicker line. So okay, we're all finished outlining what we drew and notice the pencil lines for the grid is still there. If you accidentally trace the grid, uh, later on, I'll show you how to get rid of any line that you don't like. And now I recommend that you let this dry um, at least a couple of hours. Uh, so this is a good break time in this lesson and I'm, I'm going to wait overnight. Um, and when you wash your brush, uh, be gentle with it, but be thorough. So you're going to use soap, dishwashing liquid, a bar of soap, anything. Make sure you really clean your brush well with soap, but be gentle so that you don't lose the nice point that you have. All right. Tune in next time when we start shading with this. Before we start shading our magnolia, I recommend that you do a small practice exercise. Um, I have kind of a large rectangle because of the video. You don't need a rectangle this large. You could do a smaller one. And we are going to do this whole project with just white and black paint. So um, I'd like for you to put white at one end of your rectangle, and it can be any size, like I said before, and black at the other end. And the goal is to learn how to mix all the shades of gray going from this end to that end. By the way, when you squirt out your paint, don't squirt out a whole lot because a little bit will go a long way. So you won't need a lot. And as we go from dark to light, we're going to do our mixing on our paper, not on our plate. See how I'm picking up a little bit of that white? and mixing right on my paper. Acrylic paint will dry really quickly. So this is something that I recommend that you do in one sitting where you play around with this. So we've got more black on this end. Black, white. This is me getting some of that paint off my brush. My brush is getting pretty full. Okay, so now I have a rectangle that goes from the lightest white to black with all the grays in between. This is a super good exercise because it teaches you how to mix on your paper. This will save you a lot of wasted paint. So painting on here and it will look more painterly and it will uh, end up being more satisfying in the long run as you learn how to do this. Now save this because this is gonna help us with our next step. Now I've taken that practice paper and I've cut an edge off. This way I can use it to compare the light areas, the in-between areas, the darker areas, and the darkest areas using the edge to put it right next. Is this lighter or darker than that color? Is this lighter or darker than that color? Now, it's not a perfect science, but it's very close. One of the things that's different here is the black I'm using is a cool black. And the toner from this printer appears to be a warm 
black, meaning it looks slightly browner and this one looks slightly bluer. Uh, but you should be able to use it to kind of compare and contrast which colors you might want to use when we're mixing to do the shading of our magnolia. All right, my outline is all dry and I could erase the pencil line out, but I don't have to. And I think I will leave them there so that they can help me a little bit when I think about where I am in my shadows. And I have a small squirt of black and a small squirt of white. It's best to squirt out a little at a time uh, because this paint can dry rather quickly and you don't want to waste a bunch of paint. So squirt a little bit at a time and then it'll work out better for you. If you're a beginner and you've never painted before, you might find that this size two offers you a bit more control and you'll be happy about having a smaller brush. So it's really about preference and I encourage you to get different size brushes and experiment with the different brushes. Um, so acrylic paint, it dries quickly, we said that. So it also paints better when it's wet. So when it starts to dry, um, it's a little trickier. And so we're going to paint like a square at a time and we're going to try to keep things wet. The first square, top left hand corner, da, 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 we're going to have this very nice shadow that comes. And I'm going to go ahead and paint over all three areas uh, because that'll be easier than trying to mix this color exactly again when I get to that square. And so I'm going to kind of use this and you can see it is more black than it is white. And so we will start with black when we include it on our picture. So here's the black on my picture. Black, 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 black. And then I'm going to pick up some white and mix that together while I am on my picture. So you can see the small brush is going to create a lot of brush strokes. So it will give us a very painterly appearance, which will be nice. Remember, we're making a painting. We're not making a photograph. Uh, that's a different kind of lesson. And so since it's not photorealism, or actually it's not hyperrealism, uh, we're going to be happy to see those brush strokes in there. And I better get some of this mixed before it goes away. So see how I'm mixing it on my paper. Whenever it feels too light, just add a little bit more of the dark color. And there we go. So, yep. It's about what I was aiming for. We have that whole triangle. All right, next we're gonna go with this lighter color. So let's see where we are. So we're kind of more in the middle here. Um, so it's your choice if you wanna start with white or start with black, since it's in the middle. I know I have black on my brush already from the last time. So I'm gonna pick up some white and trust that the black from before will be there. There we go. And I got a pretty large puddle there. I scooped up a shovel full. And see how those pencil lines really go away. I have enough to make it all the way over to this line. Yeah. And get down to here. I actually have quite a big puddle, so I can, if I end up with too much paint on here, I can kind of scoop it off onto a paper towel, or I can just paint right off the edges there of my paper since I'm near an edge. I can clean it off like that. So don't grab a paper towel to wipe it up. Use your brush as your tool. If ever you have too much paint, it doesn't matter what kind of paint you're using, uh, your brush is better able to carefully remove an excess of paint than a paper towel or your finger even. 
Um, so do use your brush for those situations. And I'm going to go for pretty even tone. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. Next. Well, I could just keep going stage right in the background. Um, yeah, why not? Okay. So we know it starts to get a bit darker again in our reference. Not quite as dark as that. Um, so, let's see. Don't like to waste paint so I can pick up a little bit that I had removed. And go a tiny bit dark again. When you start hearing the ch -ch -ch sound, that means your brush is getting dry and you need more paint on it. So as long as it's slip sliding around, you know you've got enough on there. This color really extends here. I think I'm going to change it to be a bit lighter. So let's say you painted this whole thing, you're like, oh, that's a bit too dark. Um, it's not a problem to start again. You can pretend like nothing is there, but... You can start again on top and go again. And notice the pencil lines are completely covered. So it was okay. You didn't have to spend time erasing. Things were fine with just covering with the, the paint. All right, and then there is kind of a bright point Another shaft of light here, so I'm just going to use what's on my brush with some white to get that covered. There we go. I tried really hard not to cover that black line. I got carried away um, just for later sake. Maybe I'll put this line back on there. See? With the black. Now I'm ready for later. Notice in the background I am covering up the black line because uh, I found the edge I wanted to keep, which was this light edge next to the dark age edge with just the color. I didn't need an outline. All right, now I'm going to go darker over here. So I'm going to start with black. All right, and that's solid black, but I'm going to tone it a little, make it a little brighter. Don't really want to be the darkest black on our picture just yet. We're almost there, but not yet. Okay, and now we'll go for all the way black over here in this corner. The photograph had some kind of wall or something, but I like going all the way to the dark side on this background to create more of an interesting background for us. Yeah. All right, and we'll get to more negative space later on in the picture, uh, but that's good for now. So we've got that kind of shaft of light kind of look to things. So, ta-da! Okay, now to start with our petals. So you've seen my small quantity of paint that I'm using, and then I folded the corner on my reference, reference so that you can see the petals that I'm looking at and the line drawing that I have for us. And these are super white. And we think about a flower, a white flower, our brains are like, that flower is white. But if we paint all these petals just plain white, you're going to lose their form that gets made with all of these shadowy lines. So we get to think about different colors of white. So we're at this bottom end of our gradation scale that we made. So I know that I still have some black left over on my brush and so I'm gonna kinda wipe that off. Notice I don't have any water here. I'm not washing my brush in water. I do not need to wash my brush and actually it would be a bad choice to wash my brush because then I get drippy water in all my bristles and they're going to paint a little better if I don't have trippy, trippy water in there. 
Um, so I've just wiped it clean and I'm going to pick up some white paint and put some straight up white on this petal. Now notice that it gets gray on it. That's good. I'm not upset about that because uh, it might be a little trickier to mix the gray than it will be to do the straight up white. And so I'm just going to go ahead and lay the gray in there to cover up those pencil lines. And then I will be able to add white on it in a little bit anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and cover that line. You can kind of see it through there. See how the lines get a little skinnier because I paint over them? And I'm trying to get the gray places all in place. So here... What's funny is I'm even getting the white places in place because painting over will be easier if I have a darker color underneath, even if it's a really light gray. So we'll go ahead and do this. If I forget to tell you later, when it comes time to clean your brush, you will need to use soap. Even if you feel like you've gotten it so clean that it can't possibly still have paint in it, it will still have paint in it. So um, be sure to use good bubbly bubbles to carry away any acrylic paint or else your brush will dry hard as a rock and it will not be able to be soft and smooth again. So you will will need good soap to clean it. You can use a bar of any bar of soap. You can use a laundry bar of soap. You can use dishwashing liquid. Lots of choices. Just be sure to use soap. <laughs> that was peeking out from the side of my brush. I didn't go in any black paint. You saw how that turned dark gray all of a sudden. Um, so that's from where the paint gets all the way up next to the gold part. Oh, wipe again. Okay. Now some white will go on top of here. And I'd say the approach to putting this white, I'm scooping it up and I'm painting it kind of like if you've ever been impatient when you've baked a cake and you, you wanted to put frosting on it, but you didn't really want to wait until the cake was cool enough and you knew when you put the frosting on it was going to like pick up that hot cake in there but you just wanted to frost it anyway so you you frosted super delicately and you used more frosting than you would expect so that you could lay it on there without picking up cake that's kind of how you paint with this white paint on top so you're kind of laying it on there with that same gentle hand to not scoop up any cake. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use this white paint to go on top of this line now. And it will be more white down here in the bottom. And I'm going to have it be more white down here in the bottom of this one. And actually, where this got all gray, it's quite bright, so no problem. It got gray, no worries. I'm just gonna put this light color on top. Now I have so much white that I wish I had that gray color again. Okay, I'm finding it in my brush. I'm just gonna kinda like a little duck step on this a little bit. Press squeegeeing out the black that's inside of the brush. So imagine how easily water would stay trapped in there. 
Well, now that you've seen how this this brush, this petal gets like the lights and the darks, let's go ahead and let's paint a faint gray like this color. So about here on your chart. Let's go ahead and put that on all the flower petals. We're not gonna be doing leaves right now, but let's go ahead and put that on all the flower petals. So I'm gonna start with a little white and pick up just a tiny, tiny point of black and we'll create that gray on all the flower petals. We'll leave the lines and then we'll come back and get the highlights and the shadow parts more later. Okay, I have now done my best to paint a gray somewhere in here on all of my flower petals. Uh, remember that we just did a little bit of highlights and shading on these two petals, so they're closer to being finished than the rest of them. We just laid gray on top. And you'll notice quite a bit of variation, and that's because I didn't try to get an exactly the same color throughout, because I like the painterly appearance of having the brush strokes on there. Also, when I was painting, I had a hard time staying off my lines. So when I got on my lines, I just got a touch of the black paint and I put them back in again. And then I picked up some white paint and kind of softened that edge. And if I accidentally covered it again, then I would lay it back in again. So there was quite a lot of back and forth kind of painting to get those lines back included. So if you notice that the lines changed at all, uh, that's why, that's why they changed. Also, I've used very little of my black paint. I haven't had to reload any black paint, uh, but I did have to do a second squirt of white paint. Um, so I still have, from that one tiny squirt, tons of black paint left over, and um, I gave myself a, a slightly more generous spot of white to continue now. All right, things are looking good. I on purpose didn't paint this part yet because I didn't want to lose it, uh, but I'm, I'm ready to do that now. And I'm gonna go with a bit darker gray here in the middle uh, so that pattern for the stamen can show up. So um, I saved that for you. So I know at this point it looks a little strange because it's so dark, but you'll be glad that we did that part differently so that it can stand out in the end. All right, now we're ready to do more highlights. My brush is probably fine because I've just been doing gray and picking up a little black, but just in case, I'm just gonna gently wipe my brush again and Notice that I'm always pulling my brush like this. Never push your brush because then your brush bristles will splay apart. We do not want to push. We always want to pull. Make sure your brush is going in the direction of your handle like this. All right, and now I'm ready to get those highlights on. So I'm gonna scoop up a little white. I'm going to consult my reference and start laying in highlights. And I'm going to start on the one that we already put some highlights in. And it's really fine if you have an edge of this paint sticking up as a texture in the end. So don't worry about that. Don't over smooth. If you over smooth, you're going to lose those nice brush strokes. So kind of leave them on top. Some people even paint with something called a palette knife. We're not doing that on this lesson, uh, but that just goes to show you how okay it is to have a nice thick textured surface. It's kind of a nice curve right there so that the brightest light is landing in this space of the open flower. Notice I'm gonna leave a gray outline between this 
bowl area and that next petal. Oops, well I meant to leave an, an outline there. I got rid of it by accident. Okay, let's put it back in. It's harder to put it back in than it is to leave it. Okay, I might have to come back later and paint next to that. All right, so I'm gonna paint too far and do my best to remember to come back and paint next to that. Let's try to have a more gentle um, change from this light color to this gray color. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more gray. Oops, I'm gonna get a little bit more white and try to make a more gentle transition there. Really take your time with this. If you wreck it, let it dry, start again. But you notice I just go back and forth between the black and the light paint. And that's how I think while it's wet is the best time to play around in it. Sometimes the hard part is knowing when to stop. So you can um, go till you're kind of feeling tired or concerned and you just don't know and then you can stop and come back and look at it again later with fresh eyes. All right, so I think I'm gonna come back to here and get this a little lighter gray. Follow the shape, that cup shape there. Okay, I'm gonna go down here, get a nice bright edge on that side. Nice bright shape inside here where the light is shining through this. And we have an intermediate color here. and some gray inside. And there's gray inside here. And even a darker line of gray right here on this edge. There we go. I'm going to do a middle gray here. We don't have a paper stump or something to smooth this around, so we mostly just have to keep mixing the paint together to get that same appearance. But painting tends to be a little faster than coloring with a pencil, so you get more results quicker, and it's harder to... Um, really lose patience with it. You just kind of go back and forth, back and forth. All right, I lost that line, so I'm gonna get it back over here from my leaf for later. There we go, leaf. Trick is I don't lay my hand in that while I'm doing my petals now. I don't really need lines in the end. So now I'm going to take care of those lines. Let's see. Oh, let's do this middle area first. Notice how those points of white really show up nicely on that dark gray. If you don't get a good effect, then maybe your gray wasn't dark enough. So you just go ahead and make your gray darker again. All right, now I'm gonna kind of lose these lines mostly. The trick is to have enough light change, color change between the two petals that they still show up. So if this is my light side, 
over here, then I have to make sure that there's enough dark side on the inside petal. That's how you get it to stand out. That is what Picasso was studying when he was inventing cubism, that there's always a dark side touching a light side. And that's how he created that abstraction, is to really push that light side next to the dark side. All right, so let's take our flower petals, each line, and we're gonna look at them and we're gonna ask which petal is the light petal and which is the dark petal, and go to all the lines and find the light side and the dark side. So we're back at petal one, and here's this line. Um, so just from the outside, we know that this is the light side and the gray is the dark side. So I'm gonna remove this black line by actually painting white on it here. Okay. And same in this area. And when it goes in front of this other petal, it is the light side. But we're gonna have to go slightly darker on the petal behind. Like a, think, think about it as a shadow to create that subtle edge. So I'm not making a line, it just happens to make a line. I know I just said that, but um, the whole space there at that edge is a bit darker. So instead of a line necessarily, it's a shadow that creates that edge. Okay, now this next petal here, notice that seems like exactly the same color. Well, there's a highlight edge on this petal that makes that line go away to there. And then it gradually gets gray over here. So we create that edge. This edge next to our background, again, light. and white. White. It's funny because we were being so careful to keep our edges and now I'm having you shade them away. But mostly I just didn't want you to get lost before you knew what you were doing, so. Those were all helpful. So we're graying this edge and we will gray this edge. Okay, this part is a little bit confusing, so let's do a little more to that. Um, we don't want to be quite this dark here for the shadow edge, but let's get our shadow points here and a shadow point here, let's get the shadow on the inside a little more, and a shadow out here a little more. Okay, now I can come in with my crisp light edges. So crisp light edge there, crisp light edge here. So even though this is one petal, it changes as you go with the gray because the light hits the top that's bent this way and then there's more shadow there. And so notice, gray touching the light color, light color touching your gray color. At each side, you're gonna have to transition to a new color depending on what it's next to. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. So now let's just continue. Um, on your own, thinking about what's dark, what's light. Look at your reference, dark next to light, next to dark, to find these light. Like there's a gap there, so that's the dark next to these two lights. 
they're touching here. That's the light next to the dark. Um, it'll be so interesting. Now back here on this pedal, this is a pedal and this is a pedal, but it's light next to light. So you won't see this line anymore. Uh, so spend a lot of time, remember, more time looking than painting. And um, we'll work on these pedals and come back together in just a second to see what has happened. So now I'm wrapping up the time I've spent finding a way to get rid of the lines. And I will say um, it takes quite a long time. No matter how good you are at this, it's not going to be done fast. Uh, for one thing, the brush won't let you get done fast. Um, because you're just going to have to keep putting it on and kind of going back and forth, back and forth. So I'm on my finishing touches, getting rid of the lines. And it looks like my last major line to get rid of is right over here. All right, before we do the leaves, we talked earlier about how we laid these background colors in. And we're just going to eliminate... Um, some confusion about what's a leaf and what's not a leaf by using that very dark color in the background. So I just have the black on my brush and I'm gonna come in, that part is a leaf, this part is not a leaf. That's a bud, this part will be our negative space here. Here. And if you accidentally obliterate something, remember you can get it back again with the white, so don't panic if that occurs. We're going to keep this leaf. I think I edited out a leaf. So if you ever notice that there's something missing, uh, sometimes for composition's sake or for ease sake, I will eliminate something that doesn't seem quite necessary. There might be a lesson on what to do if we obliterate something here in a second. I know this is a leaf that's in shade, but we're only going to make it known by a highlight. So we'll go ahead and make it dark on this side. And we'll stop about there so that we can solve that conundrum later. And I'm going to have to leave a tiny glowing edge right there. Uh, I'll remember. I'm going to go ahead and cover that with black. Okay, so I probably got rid of far more than you expected, but I think this is a good plan um, to get rid of all of those parts, except for these parts. And if you accidentally get rid of a part, like I did over here, just paint white on them again before we move on to the next step. Um, so we'll be ready. And... Keep in mind, we have this kind of shaft of light up here, and we're just going to imagine that our flower is blocking that light and shade, and that's why it's much darker down here. Uh, but we'll, we're, we'll put some more highlights in on these places, too. Um, so we're going to try not to get any paint on our flower, and we're going to focus in on our leaves now. So similar to what we did with our leaves, let's go ahead and lay in a gray color in the background. And we'll use our reference chart. Let's go for almost this dark gray. So somewhere between here and here that we will put for all of our leaves to get started. And if you accidentally erase a line, just paint your line back in. So that seems like that will be mostly black. So I'm going to put some black on there and then pick up some white and smush that around create a dark gray base on all of our leaves. Okay, we've made all the other leaves and everything that darker gray color. So between here and here, this is the general color that we've given all our leaves. And if we accidentally made a line go away, we just painted it back with black. And I must say that I finally ran out of my black puddle and I had to refill a new black puddle. 
and I ran out of white again. So now I have a new white puddle again. And I still haven't washed my brush. I've just been wiping it off on a paper towel when necessary. And we're ready to do the shading and tinting of our leaves. So when we look at our leaves, we notice that the veins and the edges of the leaves are lighter. So let's do that. I'm gonna grab a little light color on our brush and kind of find, well, this leaf doesn't count. Look at that, there's a shadow up there. Okay, so we'll do the leaves that do count. So we're gonna go on this one and then kind of find an edge. For those little lines and this one has a light edge up here so instead of black edges we have the light edge well this leaf sort of counts because it still has that light edge on the outside and it still has a light edge in the middle, it's just off center. So we're gonna go the bottom half of that dark line that we have included. And then we will do our edge of our leaf that comes around up and down. Okay, here we go. This is not a leaf. This is a flower bud. So we'll take care of that a little later. All right, we have all the insides and the outsides of the leaves with this lighter color. And I'd say while we still have this lighter color on our brush, let's go ahead and get the flower bud to be a bit lighter too. So I'm gonna outline to the left side and then there's a brighter side on the right side. And these are kind of fussy, fuzzy. They kind of look like giant pussy willows a little bit um, or lamb's ears. They've got that fuzzy texture. So you can see I'm kind of dabbing my brush after I get it on there. So I'll do my edge over here and then I'm gonna dab it to get that fuzzy look on them. Foliage. And then we'll get some intermediate color in here. We'll start with our leaf up here, and since we started with dark gray, uh, we're just kind of going in the other direction, and we're going to do some light gray kind of appearance where we have glowy sunlight showing up. So we're going to kind of blend that a bit to get rid of those sharp lines. Now, it just so happens that the highlight edges are a bit more like lines on these leaves. So we can keep those, but we're gonna thin them down a little bit by shading next to them in some places. And so even here, a little darker gray to make that edge slightly smaller. And let's get a highlight kind of right there. And then we'll move down to this leaf where we have our lines that we drew in the center and we just had to draw them that thick because that was how our brush goes but now we can do some shadows to de-accentuate those by narrowing them a bit by putting some color right next to them and i drew my leaf kind of like it was going 
the other way. So I need to kind of create this other direction where it gets thinner going this way. There we go. I was thinking about putting veins in, but I think it'll be better if I don't. I'm just going to use brush strokes to show that instead. There's my brush strokes. Okay, this leaf here. gray on that edge and mush that a little bit um, and then where this leaf overlaps this leaf there's a dark shadow under here so I'm just gonna like this for that dark shadow under there so that's fun to do that uh, there is a dark shadow like that over here and there is a dark shadow under this one and between this one and then we're gonna get some gray, oops, a little darker than that. Some gray in this little leaf part. And in this leaf part. Gonna go a little lighter on the side. And now, this big leaf right here looks like a centipede with these stripes on there. So we gotta take care of that. We don't want that to be in the front where we see that the most. So I'm gonna remember to keep my paint rather wet and blend those out. They still will go in that direction, but it'll almost be like a patchwork quilt. Well, a little less than that. So we're just gonna create that shape by mixing darks and light colors next to each other in this row. So see how it's wet paint, wet paint. We want it to be more painterly. So we'll just keep our brush copying that shape. See some light paint, dark paint, light paint, dark paint. And then we'll go the other way. Light paint, light paint, dark paint, dark paint. And we'll build it up gradually so it's more painterly than a line work. Especially dark on the top half in this corner. And it's especially light coming down the middle. There, that looks way better than that centipede that we had going on earlier. So remember, we're making a painting, we're not making a photograph. But we definitely don't want any centipedes hanging out in here. All right, let's get this a little bit darker on this side. And a little darker for this underneath leaf here. And let's go slightly lighter for this leaf that's over under this, under here. See, I put a little dark gray. And then I will put the black again for that overlapping shadow. And there's a nice black overlapping shadow there. And we'll just do a little dark gray by this edge up here. Well, I said dark gray, but light gray happened. So let me get some more dark. All right, my brush is determined to use light gray right now. So I'm just gonna put it up here on this leaf. There we go. Now I'll get some dark again. It's a 
lay in the shadow here and the shadow there. I might have to wait until it dries. If you find that it's not working at all, you might just have too much wet paint there. So you have to wait a little bit um, and really only a little bit because this paint dries so quickly. Uh, that's why you could hear, hear my surprise that it didn't work because it dries so quickly that almost will never happen to anyone. Okay, it's actually quite dark under here. So let's get that. Folded leaf nice and dark. And this folded leaf nice and dark. And we'll get some more highlights. Those little dots will be a nice addition. Remember these are glossy leaves? So these little dots are like places where the glossy, this is shining, little dashes and little dots. Let's see. These are like when we put highlights and eyes to get them to glow. It's quite thick on my brush, so I can really get that appearance of a sheen. Okay, now it's time to look at the whole thing and see if we've missed anything or if we need to adjust anything. I'm now, I'm kind of hungering for a bit of gray in this corner. That's not really anything except the continuation of this shaft of light for some reason. So I kind of like that look there. We'll stick with the super dark there. That the plant maybe isn't blocking it as much. Um, and when I was painting edges, I got just the tiniest bit of that black on that corner. So I'm going to put that back in. For that edge. So any light edges, this is your chance to get points and edges on things to encourage the shape showing through. A little more paint on that bud. This will be slightly grayer because the light is hitting it from a different angle. So it won't quite be as dark as the bottom one. Same here. All right, so I have a feeling some of you can even do better than me because I am feeling finished right now. So I'm gonna stop. Um, I'm not going to try to sign it with this brush. I'm going to remove my tape and then sign it with a pen at the bottom. And I hope to see you at one of our meetups. See you soon.